Hello, YouTube. How we doing today? So, I am about ready to move on to the next chapter of the game, and I wanted to show my method of getting the best possible start on the end game content. Beware, there will be mid to late game story mission spoilers in this video. You're welcome to hang out and come along for the ride, but be aware, this video will contain spoilers. In order to get the best possible start on the late game content, I like to roll up on the militia camps with plenty of items to trade like meats, plants, bounties. To do this, right before I leave the Lost Lake camp to find the Tealson Pass with Iron Mike, I like to take out both the Iron Butte Horde and the Sawmill Horde. The Iron Butte Horde is 300 bounties and the Sawmill is 500 bounties. So I make sure to pick up as many meats and flowers as I can along the way while I'm clearing these two hordes and while I'm traveling to the hidden loot locations to get supplies for killing these hordes. Uh, I will link a, uh, I'll put a link to the hidden loot locations video in the description so that you can use that in your playthrough as well. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Here we go. We are in game. And we are at the dreaded sawmill. Let's do this. Okay. If you have been following my best start guide or hell, even the uh, get your SMP9 early guide, either one of those will get you set up to a point where you can totally have your SMP9 and the MG45, and yes, also the auto shotgun you see there. You can have all of these weapons unlocked, like actually unlocked where you own them in your weapons locker, uh, if you were following my guide videos. Also, if you are using the hidden loot location video, you should be able to get yourself maxed out on literally everything before you reach this horde. There's no reason to go into this horde unprepared. Um, a lot of these items are things that remote bombs, you can't even get the recipe for these yet at this point in the game, but you can pick them up fully crafted and ready to use if you are using my hidden loot location videos. So make sure that you check those out to get yourself properly geared up before you go in to start this horde. So this is where I start. I start by using proximity bombs pretty far back into the tunnel really close to this entrance. That way if anything comes in behind me, there's a chance the um, bomb there will take it out before it gets to me. I also like to put bombs in these little choke points where things like the boxes and the doors and stuff make a natural choke point in the tunnel. But I am always very careful to space them out. You do not want one bomb detonating the other, so you have to make sure they're not close enough for that. The last one will go just inside at this choke point created by this fallen door right here. Now the way this works, while I am backing up and shooting at the enemies, the guys in the lead will be triggering those bombs and that will cause them to uh, get blown up by the bomb and create distance for you. It will make it where the only ones you have to deal with are the ones behind the guys in the lead. And then you have time to fall back, reload, and use the next bomb for the exact same thing. It's just to create distance. So I'm not really using those bombs to get kills. That's not where the bulk of my kills are coming from. Those are in place to create distance. Then I move in and I use these proximity mines. Again, the proximity bombs and proximity mines, you can find plenty of these. These are actually quite plentiful. You just use the hidden loot location video that I have linked in the description. You'll have plenty of these by the time you get here. Come on, there we go. Okay, we might as well start.
done as much damage as we can do there. Now let's get a focus cocktail running and get the MG45 ready. I want to keep them away from that first bomb as long as I can. Taking down the front ranks. Go ahead and reload. Okay, here we go. I think another focus cocktail is a good idea. We're going to keep these guys as far from that next bomb as we can. Buying time and creating distance. Go ahead and reload again and we'll use the next bomb. Hell, why not another focus cocktail? Might as well. I've got plenty. Okay, we'll go ahead and use this last bomb here. Again, creating distance. That's what they're there for. Always bring a weapon with a suppressor to take out random spawn enemies and stragglers. Always bring at least one weapon with a suppressor. Alright, now that we've got a little break in the action, we're going to go in and take out the freaks on the tail of the horde here. let the rest of the horde go back down into the barn, back into the mill. We'll go ahead and top off our ammo, and we'll move back in and clear out the rest of them. Nothing to it. I also like to park the bike in a position where I can get away quickly and easily if I need to, or run to the saddlebags quickly and easily whenever I need to. Yeah, we can make a few more of these. Again, putting them in choke points, but spaced out far enough that they do not detonate each other. No, you don't. What the hell was that? Did you guys see that shit? That's interesting. There are no enemies nearby. What the hell set that off? Okay, never mind. We won't use those. Not there, at least. Yeah, that stays gone, right? Oh, they're out moving around still. That's not the one. Sir, that's the one. Okay, rinse and repeat. Let's get them moving. Get the MG45 ready. Another focus cocktail. Let's pull them into the tunnel. Okay, we're fairly close to the next bomb. So 
all I've got to do is back up a little bit while I pull them into the tunnel. Go ahead and reload. Hmm. Bombs are... Bombs are bugging out. Y'all see that shit? Two of those bombs bugged out. Back to back. But... Really, this demonstrates... You don't necessarily need all the fancy bombs and traps and stuff when you've got a massive fucking machine gun. Okay, let's see if we have any stragglers left. We should have plenty of ammo between what's left in the MG45, what's left in the SMP9, and uh, the auto shotgun. We should be good to go here. There can't be that many more of them left. Is that it? Just these few assholes here? Come on, guys. Let's go. Yeah, come on, guys. Don't be scared. Oh, look. I think we're actually maxed out on bounties now. Oh, that's perfect. Is that it? Oh, come on, fellas. I dare you to run out of that mill. I think that's it. All right. So that rather beautifully demonstrates using this technique to get yourself filled up on bounties before you head south to the militia areas. It is totally possible to have yourself geared up and in a great position to get an excellent start on the end game content for Days Gone. Thank you for watching. Hope these videos have helped you out. Catch y'all next time.